Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze William Saliba's individual display at Crystal Palace and dissect how the center back played a key role in Arsenal's 2-0 win at Selhurst Park. So in today's video, first we're going to revisit how Crystal Palace looked to attack Arsenal, then we'll focus on Saliba's covered defense, and lastly we'll analyze how he had an impact in possession. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have both sides in a 4-2-3-1, and as stated in the previous video, Arsenal did a very good job of pressing in the early stages. But when they began to drop off and not get tight towards the center backs, Anderson and Gahey had more time to play long balls over the top. Gahey struggled to connect with his teammates, but it was Anderson in particular who played those diagonal balls out to Zaha and Mitchell, and later on in the game he was playing balls over the top of Zinchenko into the path of Ayu. So it was clear that this was a successful ploy to bypass the Arsenal press to get their attackers on the ball, and from there in those wider areas you often have a 2v1 or a 2v2 if Martinelli and Saka track back, which they often did successfully. So the only manner in which Crystal Palace were able to get themselves into advanced areas were if those wide players were able to win their 1v1 duels, or if they were looking to play balls on towards runners in beyond the fullbacks, and that's where you need Saliba or Gabriel to shift across to provide cover. On the rare occasion where Saliba had to deal with long balls over the top, he comfortably cleared his lines, and what you ended up seeing was that when Mateta or Eduard tried to back him in to get onto the ball and chest it down and retain possession. What he did well was that he applied enough pressure to ensure that they couldn't get up for the challenge, and then he would use his athleticism and his pace to recover, get onto the ball, shield it away from them, and then play it to Ramsdale or one of his defenders to help reset the play. And then even if you focus on the Gahey long balls that were overhit, Saliba did a very good job of tracking those runs to ensure that Eduard or Mateta couldn't break free. And when Ramsdale did pick up the ball, you could see that Saliba did a very good job of shielding those forwards to ensure that they couldn't even apply pressure towards the goalkeeper. There was only one notable moment where he had to deal with a midfield run from Jeffrey Schlupp. And that run was in space behind Ben White. But there Saliba had the pace and the strength to track that run, get on towards the ball, and then win a free kick. If you solely focus on the stats when you analyze the passing percentage, the duels won, and the clearances, it does suggest that Saliba had a very dominant performance, but when you contextualize it and you see how he was able to get these stats, what you end up seeing was that he did a very good job of covering up for his teammates. Over on the right-hand side, he did have to cover for Ben White, who was in a 1v1 duel with Zaha, and he did a very good job of limiting his impact, and Saliba did a very good job of coming across to ensure that Zaha didn't get the better of the Arsenal backline on the rare occasion that he was able to get by Thomas Partey or Ben White. Here you see Udegaard applying pressure towards the ball and you could see Zaha occupying White and checking in towards it. However, unfortunately for Palace, the pass is unsuccessful and Eduard's closest to getting the loose ball. However, unfortunately for Palace, once again, he's flat-footed and Saliba steps to it first because he anticipates the loose pass. But when he plays the forward ball in towards Thomas Partey, you could see he's in the tough position. Zaha ends up winning the ball and if he breaks the challenge on White he should be free in a 1v1 but Saliba's aware of the threat that Zaha does pose and he ensures that he makes a sliding tackle on that heavy first touch and he ends up halting the attack. And later on in that game you have a 1v2 with Zaha against White and Saliba and as he looks to cut on towards his right foot that's where he fakes and chops back towards the byline and that enables him to evade White but Saliba's aware of his threat and he shifts over to provide cover and because Zaha's touch is a bit heavy it allows Saliba to make a lunging sliding tackle to win possession and that shuts down the Crystal Palace attack. Whereas when you shift to the left hand side we did see some rotation from Zinchenko and Jaka in the half space and in theory if Saliba does have to shift over to that part of the pitch it's because he's sweeping up for Gabriel who's pulled out of position but there were occasions where he did have to sweep up for Zinchenko, Jaka, and Gabriel all together. Outside of the ability to cover Cover both sides of the pitch for his teammates. When balls were played in towards the center forwards, he did a very good job of applying pressure. And if he wasn't winning the ball, he was forcing the ball back into safe zones that forced Crystal Palace to reshift their attack. Following a Zinchenko error, you could see that there's a 2v1 in right half space with Gabriel against Ayu and Eduard. 
Edouard ends up playing the ball across the center back and you could see Zinchenko making a last ditch tackle to try and get the ball but he doesn't win it and that forces Saliba to come across to cover. He does a very good job of making a challenge just ahead of Ayu to ensure that he can't get on the ball at the edge of the six yard box. He ends up winning possession and now he's ahead of Edouard and what he does well is that he's able to evade his challenge, carry the ball through the half space in towards his touchline and from there he's capable of clearing his lines to ensure that Crystal Palace can't get a shot on goal. And then here you see Ayu looking to play a splitting pass between Zinchenko and Gabriel for Edouard at the edge of the box and Gabriel is unable to get onto it and that now calls for Saliba to come across for cover. He does well to read the danger and now he's able to apply pressure at the edge of the box to the center forward. He ends up making a last ditch tackle and he ensures that the center forward can't get a shot on goal and the only issue here is that the tackle ends up guiding the ball off Jaka's foot. Edouard is able to win a lucky challenge with the central midfielder and he's able to get a touch onto the ball at the edge of the six yard area but Jaka does well to stick with the play to ensure that they only concede a corner. In terms of Saliba's impact in possession, while he did record the highest pass completion rate in the game, outside of the passes towards Ramsdale or the square passes into the path of Gabriel, the range of difficulty in these passes that he did complete were very low. Whether it be Eze, Eduard, or Zaha looking to apply pressure, they often came in a bit late. And when he did make those forward passes into the path of Jesus or Odegaard or or at times Zinchenko, he often had enough time and space to play those 10 yard or 15 yard passes in towards his teammates and help them progress the play or simply pull markers out of position to help Arsenal retain possession and look to find openings. And there were even a handful of situations in that second half where Mateta didn't get tight towards him and that encouraged Saliba to carry the ball beyond the striker towards the halfway line and once pressure was applied he was capable of playing the ball into the path of Gabriel Jesus who dropped off deeper to link play with his teammates to help Arsenal progress the play. Here you have Saliba on the ball with Mateta not applying tight pressure and because he sees a pathway to push forward he ends up taking a touch beyond the striker and now he could slide a square ball into the path of Gabriel to advance the play. But in reality due to the inconsistency of Palace's pressing Saliba had a very easy time of carrying the ball forward without any pressure from one of the forwards or the wide players and he was capable of playing the ball between that midfield bank and towards his teammates to progress the play and that played a key factor in his impact and possession throughout that game. So as you can see while Saliba should expect to face sterner tests throughout this Premier League season his ability to provide consistently reliable cover for his teammates resulted in a comfortable yet solid display from the Arsenal centre-back.